You might have heard about the boring company's latest project, the Las Vegas Loop, which is three taxi stands under a convention center connected by a two-way tunnel where we can drive sports oh, this cars. This dude has done <sighs> so many videos on the Hyperloop, dude. Oh my god, he fucking hates the Hyperloop. Real fast. But have you also heard about Elon Musk's other project? It's called the Dugout Loop, and incredibly, it's even stupider than the Las Vegas Loop. It was already bad enough to... Oh, this guy oh, hates Elon Musk. I love him. ...build tunnels for Tesla cars that operate as taxis, but wait until you get a load of this shit. So they wanted to connect the Vermont Sunset Metro Station with Dodger Stadium. Having been built in the 60s, the stadium of course has no good public transportation connection. Because, you know, cars. And so the parking lot of the stadium is more than 12 times the size of the actual stadium. When I first saw this photo, I thought this was some kind of uh, 3D render with some like low-res terrain textures around the stadium. And then I saw that it's just, just a parking lot. It's like, ho holy shit. Like, this, this looks bad. And so, let's talk about urban planning. The place where you should actually start oh, when you want man. to fix traffic issues, instead of going with these How dare you? flashy bullshit projects. In front of you, you can see the Great Strahovski Stadium of Prague, which is about two times the size of uh, Dodger Stadium. And next to it, there are three other stadiums, actually, uh, two mid-sized and one smaller. Now, Strahovski is an absolute fucking monster. It can accommodate a quarter of a million people, of which uh, 56,000 seated, which also happens to be the total capacity of Dodger Stadium. And next to it is the Evgenia Rosicchio Stadium, with a capacity of 19,000 people. So, these are the available parking areas around the stadiums marked with red. Now, having just seen that disaster show around the Dodger Stadium, you might ask, how the fuck is this possible? And the answer is, of course, Elon good Musk. public transportation. Oh I was about to say, that's the a, that's a fucking country with public transportation. What do you mean? It's fucking entirely different than the United States of America, a country that has really horrible public transportation. Now, the metro lines don't actually stop at the stadium. As you can see, the green and the yellow metros actually give a wide berth to the stadium itself. So how do people get to the matches? By buses and trams that all stop next to or near the stadiums. And there's also a cable car, actually. And I'm telling you all this to show you that even the largest stadium in the world, plus three other stadiums around it, could be served by adjacent tram and bus lines. You know, it's not like there's a metro line stopping underneath the stadium or something. Instead, what you do is get off at the tram station and walk over to the stadium. Or, you know, just take a bus. So with this in mind, let's return to Dodger Stadium. The boring company wanted to start digging from the stadium's parking lot to the Vermont Sunset Station underneath the road. And neatly following its route because of a public right-of-way, otherwise they would need to acquire costly easements if they would be tunneling under private property. So this is a picture of the western terminus of the dugout loop. Now, this is the entire station. This is not part of it, this is the whole thing. Now, that being said, can you see what the problem is? I'm gonna leave you a few seconds. Have you noticed? The whole system has one tunnel. A single one-way tunnel connecting the metro line and the station. What is going on? Why? With my dad. Why does anybody let him get away with anything? Stadium dude? parking lot. So, <laughs> how is this system supposed to operate? Let's take a look. They plan on running these autonomous electric pods in them, capable of transporting 16 people each. Now, for comparison, that is almost 20% of a regular bus and around 10% of an articulated bus. So right off the bat, we got terrible efficiency. And uh, this is called economy of scale. It's much more economical and uh, environmentally friendly to have one big motor transport a lot of people at the same time than to have uh, lots of smaller motors transporting smaller quantities of people. Dude, it really fucking pisses me off that Elon Musk gets away with it. Especially because, like, he's not even fucking charismatic. It's literally just money, okay? Like, he is... An extremely motivated con man who has always been able to fail upwards in a lot of instances, thankfully, because of the government subsidies that he gets. But he's like not even fucking charismatic. At least con men in movies that I loved when I was growing up watching 
where they're charismatic. They were hot, you know? They would dress well, and they would be, like, smooth talkers. Whereas Elon Musk is literally like, uh, uh, the, uh this is, uh, is the cyber truck. Heckin' bacon epic style. And then everyone's like, Pog! Fucking Pog! I'm fucking creaming my pants right now to the fucking moon, Elon. Elon, please call out my cryptocurrency. Elon! I got life insurance for my parents and I fucking murdered them and then I put all the money on the cryptocurrency. Elon! Say anal doge one time! Sorry. So here, the logical solution would be to increase the bot's capacity, but then- Everyone I work with thinks he's a fucking genius? Uh, you must not work with a lot of engineers then. That- that- that can't be done. That's- that's impossible. Uh, uh, you see, uh, transporting Wait. smaller quantities of people. So here, the logical solution would be to increase the bot's capacity. But that, uh, that, that can't be done. That's, that's impossible. Uh, uh you see, uh, these, these are, these are pods. Uh, pods, not a minibus. So yeah, this is a problem you notice with a lot of these, uh, futuristic bullshit projects. It's not buses or trains for the sake of not being buses or trains. They're pods. But I'm just gonna call. Bro. Perks are the fucking king of innovation, dude. Okay. Buses used to be really fucking difficult to navigate through, uh, you know, cities. So guess what? They developed minibus. I.e. a minibus or dolmush, which means it's full. That's what that means. Dolmush literally means, oh, it's full. Love you, Ajan. Two hearts. Okay. Modern problems require modern solutions. Building out a fucking complex railway system and a subway station is difficult. So you know what Turkish uh, politicians decided to do? They said... Oh, we're going to put a bus on that. And we're going to call it... We're, we're going to put a bus on it, but like a fucking metro station, it's going to go on a line. What will we call it? Now, you might have guessed it by now because I'm going off the same meme here. It's called a metro bus. That's right. Innovation. Yep. That's what we did in Istanbul. Elon Musk, come to Turkey. Abi, İngilizce nasıl böyle geliştirdin? Dil dile değmeden dil öğrenilmez kardeş. Değdirdik. Bilmem anlatabiliyor muyum? Elon Musk SMH, don't try and hide it. Bad chest. A trolley, a streetcar, not exactly a fucking innovation, brother. Dude, that's the joke, dude. I'm making a joke. 17 months of brain smoothening. That's literally the joke. The joke is that they were like, yeah, we don't want to build a fucking railway. We, we can't do a metro station, so we're just going to put a bus on it. Slap a bus on it and call it Metro Bus. At least they have fucking public transportation in Istanbul, though, so. Financial and corruption allegations. The purchase of the Phileas buses was widely criticized in the media as a waste of resources. In 2007, each Phileas bus cost 1.2 million euros, and a total of 63 million euros was paid by IETT. To acquire 50 of them, in contrast, Mercedes-Benz capacity... Only cost 300,000 euros and proved to be much more useful than the Metro bus. 
There are reports of the ministry implicating high-ranking ETT officials, including Mehmet Öztürk, former president, indicated that the 63 million uh, euro purchase was made without a tender. Okay. Anyway, let's keep going. All the dugout loop pods, minibuses, because that's what they are. And uh, you might think if these vehicles have like a fixed route, basically a single line between... No, we have articulated buses too. Um, articulated buses don't uh, work as well. We, of course, we have articulated buses in Turkey. Are you fucking crazy? What do you think? That's like profound innovation for European countries? No, they have it in Turkey too. The reason why they have a... But the reason why they have a minibus is because an articulated bus can't go through some of the side roads. Bendy buses. All right, let's keep going. Point A and point B. That shit's bussing. They would be running on rails because, you know, that's the most efficient way of running fixed route things from point A to point B uh, with minimal friction. But nope, the tunnel will be paved and the minibuses will have rubber wheels. You know, I wonder why they just don't sink some rails into the asphalt, like tram tracks, for example, and then have these vehicles have two modes, which is a technology we do have and use. These are road vehicles that can uh, change between rubber wheels and steel wheels. So if the boring company didn't want to mess with stuff that is beyond its expertise, like uh, switches, for example, they could just build a long straight tunnel with some tram tracks sunk into the asphalt, and at the beginning and the end, the vehicles just quickly switch between their wheels. But first off, that would look too much like a train, which we can't have, of course. And second, uh, inconvenient questions might arise, such as, okay, why don't we run like a tram in it instead? Or a light metro or something. Yeah, that sounds good. So then, why are we bothering with these minibuses again? Wait, what, what? No, no, no, shut up. The Emperor's clothes are beautiful. It's just that stupid people can't see them. So the trip time between the metro stop and the stadium parking lot will be just under 4 minutes, according to their website. And this will be achieved by these minibuses traveling at up to 150 miles per hour, which is 240 kilometers per hour, on this stretch of 3.6 miles, or 5.8 kilometers. Now the problem is, uh, this doesn't seem to be possible, because the curves are just too goddamn narrow. And if you look at this curve in normal Illinois, thanks for the idea, do not eat, this thing was designed for traffic going 100 miles per hour which is only two-thirds of what the boring company wants to do with the dugout loop. So here it is overlaid on the dugout loop's route. So as you can see, the dugout loop's proposed route would not work with even 100 miles per hour, much less with 150. But putting aside all of that, there's a second problem, namely tire wear. If you don't want uh, too much tire wear, you have to avoid two things, high speeds and frequent acceleration and deceleration, which is incidentally what these minibuses would do. You know, I'm glad that the boring company is all about zero emissions, but this noble goal is kind of overshadowed if you're producing tons of rubber waste every month. Man, if only there was a solution. But believe it or not, what you've heard so far is not the stupidest part of this project. So let's move on to how the boring company actually plans to operate this thing. Oh boy. So as I said before, the metro stop and the parking lot of the stadium will be... How does this not trigger you, dude? Like, it, it literally, when you see Elon Musk, how do you not get fucking mad? And everything he does. Connected by a single... He is the human manifestation of, like, the, that VC garbage mentality. Silicon Valley in human form, dude. Shit-ass, stale-ass fucking memes. La epic Reddit memes. <clears throat> and, like, horrible ideas that are repackaged as, like, new and innovative. Tunnel. And to use it, uh, you need to buy a ticket at the ticket office or in an app, get to the station at the specified really time, the get transported to the stadium, watch the match, and then go back down to the dugout loop, which will then take you back to the metro stop. As they write on their website, dugout loop operation during games and special events will be event-specific. Generally, transportation from the Western Terminus to Dodger Stadium will begin prior to event start times. Transport from Dodger Stadium to the Western Terminus will generally commence sometime following the start of the event. Which is, you know, it's a system where... What? So basically Elon Musk invented a shitty route taxi. And he put a fucking tunnel over it for some reason. So, uh, okay, so... Since this is an extremely time-specific service, meaning it only runs in very, very specific times, why don't we just ditch the tunnel idea? Yeah, so let's have these pods run on the surface, make them bigger, and so voila. Let's call it the Dodger Stadium Express. Now some of you might be saying, hang on a second, the whole point of the dugout loop is that it's a fast, dedicated lane system. 
To which I say, let's take one of the five lanes of the road leading to the stadium and convert one or two into a bus lane for the time of the event. Oh, dude. Okay, dude. I mean... I mean, he's crazy, this guy. And if you want to make it really fast, we can employ this technology that every Western European city already employs called Automatic Green Wave for Buses. Right, so let's move on to capacity. The Boring Company website says, Initially, dugout loop will be limited to approximately 1,400 people, approximately 2.5% of stadium capacity per... Elon had a threesome with Cara Delevingne and Umber Th Turd? Who the fuck is Umber Turd? And are you fucking kidding me? Elon Musk had a threesome with Cara Delevingne? Shut up. Is that real? That makes me so sad. Oh my fucking god. I bet she did, though. What? Wait, hold on. Oh god. Oh, Elon Musk denies threesome with Amber Heard and Cara Delevingne. What? With his ex Amber Heard and model Cara Delevingne, the Tesla billionaire gave an exclusive statement to page six after astonishing new claims. Poggies. Kara and I are friends, but we've never been intimate. She would confirm this. Dude, honestly, honestly, he probably, you know what? He probably said, how is your quarantine going? Hopefully it was eventful. And then Kara was like, oh my God. Please, you're a billionaire. I would love to have sex with you. You're like modern day Tony Stark. That's what happened. And he's like, oh, that's the epic bacon. Come over to my millionaire mansion. To my billionaire mansion. Hey, I will let you ride in artificial intelligent Tesla. Elon, bad am I right? Oh my God, I'm creaming. I haven't been this excited since I've seen jellied eels. <laughs> My fanny is fluttering. <laughs> Elon. I do not know what fanny flutter is. <laughs> per event. Based on city and community feedback, it could be possible to increase ridership per game to 2,800 per game or event, 5% uh, of stadium capacity. Between games and events, dugout loop... Hey, Elon's like, I saw your video on Architectural Digest. You had a vagine, vagine hey, tunnel. Months, it's kind of similar to what I want to do with Hyperloops. <laughs> but we put pods in. It would transport a quarter of a million people per year. Wait, between games? So they actually do want to use this as like normal public transportation outside of events. Okay, so 250,000 people per year. Uh, this might sound a lot actually, but as a European, uh, I have to say like this, this number is nothing. Like, like this is nothing. This is shit. You, you don't have anything. This is not public transportation. And to illustrate this point, let's look at the closest thing I know to the dugout loop in Europe. I mean, it sounds funny, but it Maybe the ideas existed before as well, but Elon put it on the map and shouldn't be disregarded. Just like Connor put MMA on the map, it existed before, but they made it mainstream and attractive. No, you're totally right. Like, literally zero people were thinking about the subway before Elon Musk put it on the map. Or tunnels in general, actually. It's pretty cool that Elon Musk invented tunnels in 2017 when he did a le epic uh, bacon Reddit uh, thread. Kind of wild, dude. You're right. He did popularize it. Like, tunnels, no one was using them. No one knew. People, people forget that before Elon Musk, many were afraid to be inside of tunnels. Yeah. It's a, it's a natural fear that people have, like...
but it's actually kind of similar. And it's the Budapest M1 Metro line. Or... What about reusable rockets and electric cars? Yes, once again, reusable rockets and electric cars were not a thing before Elon Musk. Thank you for... The only thing yeah. Elon Musk unironically revolutionized is having an auto dealership that also is directly... Uh, like, having your own auto dealership. That's it. He disrupted the insane fucking control that auto dealerships have over uh, individual states. That is unironically the one singular thing that Elon Musk did. That's pretty much it. Okay, bro, no need to roast me that hard. I'm just stating my opinion, man. Dude, do you understand why your opinion is kind of silly, though? Like, do you get it? Like, I'm making fun of you because, I mean, there's a reason for why I'm making fun of you. <sighs> like, Elon Musk didn't invent any of those things. Elon Musk doesn't really invent anything regardless, but, like, he certainly did not invent any of those things. And he didn't even fucking popularize it. You just think that he did. Because, unfortunately, that's how it works. Elon Musk is very, very, very good at marketing himself. He's very good. Elon invented banks with PayPal. <laughs> One oh, man. Ajahn. The loop stuff is absolute trash, but his e-cars, his electric vehicles and rockets are pretty much popularized. Elon Musk's rocket technology is unfortunately a problem that the federal government should be dealing with, but we're, we've outsourced this to fucking SpaceX. I wish it was exclusively in the hands of JPL, but we don't live in a world where NASA still controls uh, all of the space travel. It's also still heavily subsidized by the government. So, I just, let me just, like, stop you right there. You know, not a single thing about rockets at all. It's literally just... 51 months, wow. NASA scientists that he hired... ...that are still continuing the government-subsidized research... to build a reusable rocket. Dude, what are you talking about? You aren't an aerospace engineer? Yeah, no shit. And neither is Elon Musk, dumbass. What the fuck are you talking about? Don't make me fucking call my aerospace engineer that I have literally on speed dial. Okay? To win this argument. Because I don't know what the fuck he's doing right now, but he'll be very pissed if I bring him over here because he's probably building some shit in my garage at the moment. Uh, Milani Wifield Lattivashut, built during the late 19th century and thus was the first electrified metro service on the continent. It was a small, electric, underground, environmentally friendly express service going just underneath the Andrashi Avenue from the city center all the way to the giant park that's behind Hero Square. So what they did was they actually dug out the uh, road, built the tunnels and then filled it back up. It took two years to complete and it's operational to this day. Originally they ran these small seamen's carriages on it, which I guess were the pods of the era. And apparently one of the original cars is today in the Seashore Trolley Museum in Kennebunk Park, Maine. Which, you know, that's cool. These metro cars were later replaced by trains of Hungarian production, which were higher in capacity, but the system itself is still tiny. This is by no means a regular metro service. It's a little baby line. 
And yet, this thing transports 80,000 passengers on each workday. And if we assume that the number of passengers is only half on weekends, then this tiny toy metro transports 25,120,000 passengers each year. And so this is what the passenger numbers look like when I put them on a graph. Compared to the toy metro, the dugout loop is barely a statistical error. And if we compare this to a normal metro line, like the M3, and using the same formula, we get this graph. I'm showing you this just for the sake of perspective. The dugout loop is, is nothing. It does nothing. It serves no one. It doesn't even exist when compared to like normal, well-designed systems. And you might be saying, hey, it's a bit unfair to compare the dugout loop to the M3 Metro. And yes, it is. Isn't SpaceX heavily relied on already existing NASA concepts and research, but currently leeching off government funds that should have gone to NASA? Yes, that's literally, you are describing, you are describing nearly the entirety of uh, space travel. That is precisely what is going on in every fucking company that engages in it. Whether it's Jeff Bezos' uh, personal pet project because he wanted to go to space before everybody else, or Elon Musk with SpaceX, it was a Blue Origin or whatever the fuck Jeff Bezos had. It's all of it. All of it is that. Elon Musk well, Elon sued Musk, Top Gear. The first time I reviewed a Tesla, he sued me and lost, and then um, he appealed and lost that as well. You know, it was a, it was a fair, it was a hard hitting review, but it was a fair one. I, by the way, I think Elon. I, I'm sorry, people are gonna get mad at me for this too, but I think the Teslas are dog shit. Like, I, and I say this as someone who was very interested in buying a Tesla Model X because, otherwise, Susan Wojcicki will not give me a gold button when I inevitably reach a million subscribers on YouTube. So I was like, I have to buy a Tesla Model X. Like, it's something that many people don't know, but like YouTube literally will not give you a plaque. Like, they will not, they will ban you before you reach a million subs if you don't have one. So I was going to get one, and then I was in one, and I realized like, oh, wow, this is pretty fucking shitty. Anyway, uh, I, I mean, I'd still get a fucking Taycan, though. If I could fit in one, I would buy a Taycan. I would buy a Porsche Taycan. They're fucking sick. Um... That original Tesla, I didn't think was very good then, and I still don't now. By the way, in 2008, Carlson said Tesla's roasters didn't seem to work, and he was fucking right. That's why Elon Musk lost that fucking battle. God, oh, they've come on. We have a Tesla Model X in the new series, and oh, oh it's... Um, a lot of it's very impressive. Some of it's a bit dodgy, but a lot of it's very impressive. It's a really interesting new way of looking at what a car is. You know, there's a lot of stuff in that thing for a nine-year-old. Yes, I know Tesla makes most of its money by selling green credits. They pump out as many poor build quality cars as, uh, uh, as soon as possible to make money off of green credits. Uh, I also listened to the three-part series from the True and On podcast. And yeah, by the way, if you fucking despise Elon Musk right now, oh my god. If you listen to if you listen to their shit, dude. Oh my lord. That's before we get to the fucking That's before we get to the actual uh the the labor union practices, the non-existent labor union practices that they uh engage in. Like the funniest one, I mean, this is we've talked about this before, like where they don't have like fucking safety lines in the factory because he doesn't like the color yellow. Like it, it's insane shit. It's like completely insane shit. Anyway, I want to see what the fuck he has to say. And all men have a mental age of nine. I mean, you're sitting there, you're trying to, you know, you're not nine, but in there you're nine. Wait, what? And all men have a mental age of nine. I mean, you're sitting there, you're trying to, you know, you're not nine, but in there you're nine. We all are, we're all silly. And there's a lot of silly stuff in that car that appeals to the inner nine-year-old. I liked it. Kobe and bro, the roadster, dude, it's gonna be so sick. Dude. Isn't that great? It's literally like Donda. And Elon Musk, like, what will come first, dude? The Roadster or Donda? Elon Musk and Kanye West have a lot of similarities. This is actually blasphemy because, like, 
The difference is like Kanye West actually makes good shit. Whereas Elon Musk simply does not. But they do have a lot of similarities, you know, taking advantage and utilizing or rather exploiting other uh, lesser known hardworking individuals that are truly innovative in their field. They have a good eye for that kind of talent, bringing them under their label or bringing them under, you know, Tesla or SpaceX and working them to the fucking bone. And I say this as a Kanye fan, don't get me wrong, because in my mind, the, the MAGA Kanye period, Jesus is King, never happened. So I refuse to think about those times because it never happened. Um, and also, both of them, both of them make, uh, you know, a lot of false promises. They have uh, delusions of grandeur regularly. Farming angry Elon simp reacts. I'm attacking two of the fucking, pr like, prime internet. I'm getting everyone, okay? I'm getting everyone with this. Like, you're either a fucking Kanye stan unconditionally or an Elon stan unconditionally. Both divorced dads. Both divorced dads. I hate when people think that people like Elon Musk are geniuses, even though they're entrepreneurs and market specialists. Well, I'm a developer and actually do work hard on the technology. Yes, that is what's incredibly frustrating for someone like myself as well. Listen. Listen, I, I have relatives that uh, work on, uh, you know, space travel and planes and such. Engineers, if you will. And uh, I also get very frustrated when I see... Uh, singular individuals getting credit for an entire team's work when they didn't even fucking touch it. <sighs> yes! Both African Americans! True! That was funny. Good one. That's a good joke. Shit, that's good. That's good, dude. Oh my god, that's good. Wow. <laughs> it's not a joke, Pago. I mean, it's literally not a joke. It is true, but also kind of funny. Don't you think it's good that Tesla made a first move that other companies are moving towards electric too now? Are we now unironically saying Tesla is the reason why other countries are uh, other co other companies are making electric vehicles? Really, like? Like, not a single... Are there people in this chat that think, like, Tesla is the first EV? Percent, can we get some Gamba in the chat? I spent all my channel... Dude, I think it's profound. You never I really do. I think it's profound that uh, Elon Musk invented electricity. Like, it's pretty wild. I mean, think about it, dude. Uh, dude. Guys. Uh, Tesla. Elon. Tesla. Elon. Nikola. Tesla. That's right. Let's go and go. Isn't that ironic that he named years. the company Tesla after buying it? Not even his own company. But also, uh, he's doing literally everything Nikola Tesla absolutely despised. Electric car, weren't electric cars literally uh, an earlier invention than the, the, uh, the, the regular cars that we uh, know and use? Before Elon Musk, we had the rub stick to, sticks together to make a fire. The idea that Elon Musk, a multi-billionaire, is trying to do something positive for anything or anyone other than making electric cars and nothing else is just pure insanity. He definitely made them popular, though. I like that we went all the way down to, like, he literally invented the subway and electric vehicles to now we're just basically saying, well, he made them popular, kind of, you know? Yeah, okay. I, I agree. He's a good marketer. But motherfuckers never talk about Elon as though he's a good marketer. They think he's 
you know, Tony Stark IRL. And even then, it's like billions and billions and billions of dollars in new Steve Jobs uh, subsidies from the government that actually made Tesla possible, like a reality. If only the government would have ownership over the company and could, uh, I don't know, unionize it like it's a public right, workplace, right. given the amount of sheer fucking dollar dues that the American government has put in the fucking Tesla at a time when he was just basically fucking getting all of the deposits from the last people that were maybe hopefully copium one day going to receive a fucking roadster and building out the first ever cars when he was running out of money i don't know if only at a time when the government has bailed him out time and time again we had a piece of ownership tesla is the 808s and heartbreaks of ev It's funny, a lot of people are caught up with Elon Musk and are, are you know, they, they love Elon Musk until Elon Musk comes to their industry, their specific industry or an area of their personal expertise. And only then do they realize like, oh, this what guy's a Elon charlatan. And Thomas Edison so in there are people who are like, I was a fan Tesla. of Elon Musk, but this whole fucking... Uh, the, the microchip brain pig microchip thing like this is fucking the neural link this is insane elon musk has consistently exclusively built a career out of failing upwards by over promising and under delivering over and over again with the hopes that his fucking psychopathic k-pop stand style fan base of actual adults because there's a difference between k-pop is like not 14 year old girls actual neck bearded Tech uh, blogger adults that fucking soy face every time Elon Musk is like, Duh, yeah, I'm going to make a car that also flies. Cara Delevingne, how are you? And then they're all like, oh my God, Pog, I'm soy facing. He's made an entire fucking career out of all of those same fucking neck bearded dipshits forgetting that like, you know, 90% of his promises fall short and never actually end up delivering. But they forget because they're way too fucking caught up on the next thing that he's promising is going to happen. It should be also known that Tesla is, a more, is more than a car company. They do invest and push heavily into the battery and solar panel markets. Do they now? Maybe one day. Hopefully. My boss was so it's confused fine. when I told him you won't be able to get an MRI with the Neuralink. It's insane. Solar roof shingles. Dude, I just wanted to buy an EV. Why are you bullying me? No, get the EV. Make sure that it doesn't like, make sure the lithium battery doesn't fucking explode. Or whatever that fucking tire wobble thing that occurs apparently in, in a lot of Teslas uh, doesn't happen to you. In which case, you might need to sign an NDA to get that thing fixed because technically it's not under warranty despite the fact that your car is a lemon. They don't do anything with solar. I work in that world and if you want to talk about the shit show that is Tesla solar, I'll tell you everything wrong with them. Oh, man. Okay, we're fucking lithium battery mining releases more carbon emissions than a gas vehicle will over its entire life. I'm not going to watch that sad Kyrgyzogs video.
It's insane if the battery catches fire. It takes up to 25k gallons of water to put out a fire in up to three hours. It's lithium, dude. Of course. The fuck do you mean? Let's finish this video, though. So I just compared it to the M1, which is actually shorter than the dugout loop. And they could actually finish it in two years using 19th century technology. Meanwhile, the boring company said they would do the dugout loop in 14 months using Elon's fucking magic space age technology. Hey, but they did say likely much less in parentheses there, so it's okay. You know, construction projects historically finish on time and never get deal. Yeah, but is it wrong to look up to him and think of him as an idol? Yes. Yes, he is a con man. Unless you idolize the fact that he was able to consistently dupe a lot of these dumbasses in Silicon Valley and uh, make it seem like he has brilliant innovation almost always when he never had the, uh, uh, the, the actual product, then yes. But we do love con men here in America, so... Delayed. And mind you, it's 14 months for a single tunnel, whereas with the M1 Metro, they had to dig a tunnel twice as wide. And don't forget that they had to build a bunch of stations as well. In contrast, the Las Vegas loop, which is unfortunately happening, took 16 months to complete, while being less than a fourth of the length of the proposed dugout loop, at 0.8 miles or 1.3 kilometers. So basically the dugout loop was a complete fucking failure on all levels. Literally, I cannot think of a single aspect which the dugout loop got right. Its layout is nonsensical, it has no capacity, is not interoperable with any other systems, it has horribly inefficient energy use, and worst of all, had this thing been built, it would have pushed out actually useful public transportation investment in the area. So what would be an actual good solution here? What could the area do instead of the dugout loop? Well, for example, build a tram. Take two lanes from Sunset Boulevard and turn them into dedicated tram tracks. Lord knows there is enough space for that. And this will actually not cause traffic jams, because induced demand works the other way around as well. Wait, so I, I didn't realize this. We actually fucking have... We have a Vegas Hyperloop that's in the works. So instead of building high-speed rail, we're now making this dumbass fucking Elon Musk tunnel? We live in the worst country on the planet, and we deserve all the bad things that are happening to us all the time. That's it. It finished. It's a meme. We are a country... If it wasn't for this well-oiled imperial machine, we would literally just... I don't know how the fuck we're a country, dude. We're like loosely tied together by, uh, uh, you know, our profit motive uh, interests aligning with one another. We're like a, a consortium of corporations that are constantly scamming one another and just sucking up funds in the form of tax dollars from the American workers that they also exploit to fucking generate value in the first place. It's insane, dude. What the fuck? Well... You could put a tram stop next to the stadium and perhaps turn part of the parking lot into actual useful public space, such as a city park or something. In general, though, uh, traffic problems will not go away by just throwing capacity at it, which is what the boring company does, basically. Oh, your, your highway is congested? Well, let's just build some more lanes, but underground. Because increasing capacity worked out so well in the past. Uh, but here's the thing. Even if they would solve all the traffic problems, even if they would build enough tunnels so that there will be no more traffic jams at all, like anywhere, just zero, that would still be a very, very bad thing. Because if you provide everyone with road capacity so that they can drive, then... I live in Las Vegas and the loop is finished and it's literally a fucking Tesla advertisement. The vehicles go at like 20 miles and have drivers. What? Everyone will drive. Driving itself is actually very cost and time efficient on short and middle distances. Oh, so the Vegas loop is not from Vegas to LA. Okay, I misunderstood. Distances. And also, it's much more comfortable than public transit. However, the bad part is everything else. Cars are horribly space inefficient. They make us fatter. They cost a lot of money to buy, maintain, and operate. They kill a lot of people. And producing them is actually very environmentally unfriendly, especially with the batteries and all that. And even if some of these problems could be alleviated by gigantic underground tunnel systems and parking lot complexes, switching over society to cars America would produce a gone. lot of socioeconomic and environmental fallout for places that don't have these things. In Prague, they built this huge system of underground highways to alleviate the traffic problems. And guess what? It didn't solve anything. 
In fact, it only made the problems worse. 8 out of 10 people from around the city commute into the city by car. And the result is clogged up streets and constant traffic jams in the places where there aren't any highway tunnels. In the end, we should focus on building urban areas where having a car is not a necessity, or even disincentivized. If we want to start combating climate change effectively, we should stop dragging two tons of metal and plastic with us wherever we go. And the planning of neighborhoods should enable this choice. You know, like new urbanism, walkable city, 10-minute neighborhood, all these things. It's a complex and difficult solution to a complex and difficult problem. And I don't think it's a good idea to look to rich, out-of-touch car maker billionaires to just solve climate change with a revolutionary idea or two. Or in the case of Elon Musk, flashy CGI remakes of century-old ideas. Because if an idea sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. And if you're a fan of Elon Musk, uh, who happened to chance upon this video, uh, please understand that this video... Your take on SpaceX is wrong. No other company slash country has reusable rockets. Stage one rockets. Dog. I understand. You're not understanding what I'm saying. It's not like Elon Musk is the first person to decide That's we right. should make reusable rockets. Or it's not like he's the one who fucking built the reusable rockets. You dumb fuck. He did not fund it. Okay, the government funded it. The technology was built on prior research that was, again, conducted by the government scientists. Okay? Elon, it doesn't matter if he exists or not. Okay? Like, th this would already work. Without Elon Musk manning the helm. Elon Musk did it in a cave? No, he didn't. Why do you hate on everyone I like? I don't. I don't hate on everyone you like. I don't know. Do you, give me another person and I'll tell you, you maybe they're great thank you the electric ant for the five get this subs worst thing about Elon Musk is that he has done nothing for the SM64 Doja Cat, I like Doja Cat literally exposed for splicing both of his world record speed runs when people host him, he literally doesn't even react anymore. Whatever, just venting. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I just want.